everyone and welcome to another video. Now during my search for cheap PCs online I came across this machine. The specs aren't anything special, there's just a Core 2 Quad and an old AMD card in here but what really grabbed my attention was the CPU cooler. Up until this point I had never seen anything like it. We've all heard someone describe a CPU or system fan as sounding like a jet engine, but here we have something that actually looks the part too. This very piece of hardware has inspired the start of a new mini-series called Weird Tech or something like that anyway. Unlike most other coolers, this one also has a separate RPM control unit that takes up a single space at the back of your case. The dial simply reads low and high. It can be adjusted to anything in between as well. There's also a few other cables dangling from the unit itself and as I was trying to work out who created this unique contraption, I spotted the name Cooler Master. It was during this discovery that two cables connecting the fan to the RPM dial just disconnected, perhaps due to the dried up solder that was holding them on by a literal thread. I already had a hunch that this was pretty old as it was sitting atop a Socket 775 motherboard, but oddly enough, this seemed to be a user created modification. After Googling jet engine cooler, I discovered that the top blower part once belonged to the Cooler Master Jet 7 or Jet 4. Two coolers designed for both AMD 462 socket and Intel 478 socket motherboards respectively. Using Wayback Machine, I found the original listing for it on a US site called Newegg. The Jet 4 retailed in August 2004 for $45 and the Jet 7 cost $39. The reviews were pretty good, though it was originally designed for cooling older CPUs, so the fan has since been attached to a Socket 775 heatsink at some point in its lifetime, and how well it'll cool a newer Pentium 4, well, I just don't know, but we'll find that out a little later on. It's clear that it's been atop of this processor for a while, as it is very dusty, so I took it apart and gave the Intel heatsink a quick blast with the hose. Not an ideal cleaning technique, but I'm all out of air dusters at the moment. This method is fine if you make sure it's completely dry before use again, though I will reiterate that it's not the best way to do things. The jet engine part had to be cleaned by hand though, and that's where all the cables are, so spraying this with a hose didn't really seem very clever. As I began scrubbing away for the next hour or so, it was clear that the buildup of dust had probably been accumulating since the early 2000s and if you put your ear to it and listen carefully, you can hear Drop It Like It's Hot by Snoop Dogg playing on a loop. With the fan all cleaned up, I was ready to try it out. This didn't go so well at first because my ASUS motherboard didn't recognise the processor and I thought this was the reason that the jet style fan didn't work. I would later realise that this was due to the cables coming away from the fan speed dial, the one we discussed earlier. I thought that these weren't necessary and that the fan would still run at full speed, but we just got a couple of flashing white and red lights instead, which, although disappointing, still fit with the whole airplane theme. I don't know about you though, but I like my plane engines functioning correctly, so I swapped out the Core 2 Quad for the old school Pentium, just because I know it worked with the BIOS, and then got to troubleshooting. After soldering one of the cables back onto the dial, and testing the other by holding it in place, the fan ramped up to full speed. The other connector on the dial keeps the speed at a constant rate, eliminating the need to adjust the dial at all. Let's see if it still works as it should though. So, come here a minute. Oh, look. <laughs> 
sporting one of the random gaming t-shirts that are work in progress as you can see oh finger over the lens this one hasn't gone <laughs> perfectly but we are working on some merchandise ideas you can check sophie's channel out in the meantime in the description if you like and yeah but i do actually need your assistance okay so with Sophie putting the camera on the tripod and leaving without really assisting at all, I began to look at the RPM adjusting dial in action. It seems to be working fine. Even with the dial at the highest setting, the Pentium was idling at 55 degrees. Imagine slapping this on something like the modern day FX 9590, instant sauna inside your house. I then wondered how this would compare to a legit 775 stock cooler, more specifically the one that came with this Pentium 4. It's a chunky old beast, so it's no surprise that it keeps the Pentium 7 degrees cooler at 48. During a Half-Life 2 gaming test, because that's about the only thing that this processor will run these days, the temperatures went up to 64 with the jet fan, but they stayed at around 57 with the stock cooler. The Cedar Mill Pentium 4 I'm using does traditionally stay cooler than other versions, so it's not one of those room heating chips. The stock cooler was the better performer here though, but in my opinion, the jet engine style one is still my favourite because it just looks so cool. I guess then that this has been the first episode of Weird Tech or whatever I end up calling it. Um, if you enjoyed this video please leave a like on it down below. If you didn't leave a dislike. I've never seen one of these fans before so I thought it would be interesting to talk about and check out whether or not it still worked. I guess it did in the end after a little bit of fixing it but I was the one who broke it I suppose so there we go subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one